Thank you, Bernard. It is a great pleasure to present the latest advances introduced by Philips with the new X51C transducer and how these latest uh, improvements allow us to analyze the right heart more effectively. The right heart structures are notoriously much more complex shape, more dynamic and have far more variability than the left-sided ones. Conventional RV focus views allow only a partial visualization and a very limited appreciation of the complex shape right ventricle. In 2015, chamber quantification guidelines recommended longitudinal strain and 3D ejection fraction for the routine practice. However, they stress the importance also of having a good image quality. In the recent years, right ventricular strain was found to be superior than TAPC and fractional air change in nearly all cardiovascular conditions. There is now a massive amount of data showing that right ventricular ejection fraction by 3D and strain are reliable, are prognostically important. Huge efforts have been done to standardize the measurements of the RV strain to obtain robust reference values from nearly 2,000 healthy subjects in different ethnicities to validate the methods prospectively with outcome. There is really no other imaging modality that has gathered more evidence for advancing the right ventricular assessment and echocardiography in the last years. But as Churchill was saying, however beautiful the strategy, we should uh, occasionally look at the results. And interestingly, despite the technology exists in 90% uh, of the European labs, paradoxically, only 10% of them actually use 3D echo to measure the right ventricular ejection fraction. A quarter of them does not provide even a single measurement of the right ventricular function. And they do not believe in 3D because uh, due to its image quality and operator dependency. This year, Philips has introduced its newest transducer, the X51C, uh, meant to improve the image quality of transthoracic 2D and 3D echocardiography. A few technical information before showing you some examples. This new transducer has five harmonic choices, allowing to cover higher frequencies up to 2.5, 5.0 megahertz, has a more efficient uh, thermal uh, performance, leading to more power output, improved image quality and higher temporal resolution in 3D and 3D color. The transducer also has a curved lens, as you can see from this image, that allows a better access through narrow rib spaces and has an improved plunkability, which means a greater ability for anyone to obtain a good image on a first try and also a faster uh, examination. Finally, this new transducer is lighter than the previous one, easier to scan all day and has an increased durability. What does it mean practically? It means a higher signal to noise ratio, greater ability to detect small signals, for instance, to image the thin uh, aortic valve in a normal uh, subject. The new transducer has increased sensitivity to display fine but important details such as mitral annular disjunction to look at subvalvular apparatus uh, in this young man with bilifed prolapse and family history of sudden cardiac death. Look at the increased echogenicity of the inferobasal wall. We found this aspect to be highly correlated with presence of LGE at, uh, at CMR. In hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the septal thickness myocardial dishomogeneous texture are much better appreciated with this new transducer. This patient underwent myectomy for Holcom at age 8. Now she is 17, she was quite short and, uh, with, uh, and thin with the narrow intercostal spaces. And despite this highly reflective septum, we were able to obtain quality images of the right ventricle and also to see even a trivial amount of uh, tricuspid regurgitation. The improved image quality in the near field, higher definition of the endocardium is evident in this patient with apical hypertrophic cardiomyopathy. One can also measure more confidently the maximal thickness, while with the old probe, probably uh, we needed a uh, contrast enhancement. Now, coming back to the RV, uh, this is even more obvious that the image quality is crucial for the quantification of the right ventricle by two-dimensional echocardiography, but particularly by three-dimensional echocardiography, because with the old transducer, as you can see on the left, it was not always easy to obtain high definition of the walls. 
Here you can appreciate the difference in image quality, both of the rendering of the endocardium, but particularly if you look at the 3D slices with the new transducer. We use this multi-slice display in real time, find it particularly useful for acquiring the RV because you have more control on how well you have included the RVOT and the anterior wall, for instance, which may be subjectively visualized otherwise. And the CMR display is very uh, appreciated even by non-echo imagers, extremely useful for wall motion abnormalities, for instance, during stress. What else can you get? You can get more accurate automated measurements, for instance, by dynamic heart model artificial intelligence algorithm. This is an example. In this athlete, uh, we have quantified LV, RV volumes and ejection fraction by 3D. When we have obtained really similar measurements with respect to the CMR that has been obtained two days after, but we also have reported a normal longitudinal deformation of the RV, which is more sensitive measure than the ejection fraction. How long does it take? In this study, in uh, almost 200 consecutive patients uh, scanned in Milan and in Chicago, Dr. Volpato reported that it actually takes less than one minute to acquire the dynamic heart model and the time needed for automated analysis of all data was around four to five minutes. But you get much more quantitative information on the uh, right ventricle. Look at these two 2D images. They are uh, practically similar. However, the image on the right is uh, one of the many, many slices that one can obtain from a 3D acquisition. This is particularly important for the diagnosis of arrhythmogenic cardiomyopathy, where regional wall motion abnormalities are the main imaging criteria. This is particularly important in athletes that might have a non-specific dilation of the right ventricle. And the sites uh, included in the triangle of dysplasia are not actually confined in the uh, four chamber view that we are uh, usually uh, evaluating. So we need to look at the anterior infundibular subtracuspid inferobasal wall, and this is much more complicated with 2D. Now, thanks to the latest innovation in 3D, we can easily move from conventional views to these specific views. We can alineate uh, the short axis to be truly perpendicular to the long axis of the right ventricle, and then choose which of the longitudinal axes we need for the disease we are searching for. And now we can easily and finally look much better to the subtricuspid inferobasal bulge, in this case of a, an athlete with uh, uh, ventricular arrhythmias and family history of sudden cardiac death. And in this way, you can definitely improve the sensitivity of echocardiography. We can also look at the valves and uh, this eliminates the needs of several dedicated 3D zoom acquisition for each valve because if you have a good full volume acquisition, you can look at the aortic valve on the mitral valve, tricuspid valve from one uh, single data set. Finally, a very challenging patient with a dual pacemaker uh, implanted several years ago. Now she is in VVI R mode and she has a massive tricuspid regurgitation. She comes with the compensated heart failure. And so it was quite challenging in this case to get a very good acquisition of the tricuspid valve. And while trying to do so, we noted a very strange uh, shape here of the atrial catheter and uh, which seemed to be impinging on the valve. We then uh, compared the uh, chest X-ray uh, of this patient with the one taken right after implantation, and we have seen that actually it was the um, looping and it was loosened and impinging on the tricuspid valve, as we have seen on 3D. We can also look at um, measurements and perform automated measurements of several consecutive beats in natural fibrillation, which is much more uh, easy and faster. And finally, with transillumination and 3D color transparency can be useful to uh, look at the position of the pacemaker lead with respect to the tricuspid valve, which sometimes can be obscured by uh, the 3D color uh, rendering. This is very important uh, for deciding the feasibility of transcatheter repair in high surgical uh, risk uh, patients. Finally, an improved 3D image quality allows us to apply glass view technology also for transthoracic by removing the myocardium and looking at the cavities uh, from outside, we can appreciate the beauty of the spatial relationship between the RV outflow, 
between the aortic valve and uh, the crisscrossing between the RVOT and LVOT. These are very important applications for congenital heart disease, for diagnosis transposition, particularly with perinatal and fetal echo. And it is also important for teaching and understanding the complexity of congenital heart disease abnormalities. So uh, in conclusion with this short presentation, I hope to have shed more light on the right heart, right heart conditions, which have a major impact on diagnosis, quality of life and survival of our patients. Since ECHO is our main imaging tool, it is used as a gatekeeper for other tests. Therefore, the quality of imaging and the reliability of information is crucial. Many of the past issues of uh, the 3D echocardiography like uh, image quality, low temporal resolution, operator dependency have been addressed by the latest innovation in transducer technology and AI-based measurements. And now it is on our side, uh, the echocardiographic community to make RV ejection fraction and strain an important part of the routine transthoracic examination and reporting. Thank you very much for your kind attention.